Howdy, nerds. So I've had a passion for video games since I was a small child. One of my earliest memories of playing video games was on Super Mario World, playing Iggy's Castle. In 2013, I got hooked on Minecraft and just started making all kinds of maps and creations with it. For me, it wasn't really a game as much as it was a game engine. And as you can tell from the rest of my channel, I really went all in with this. I've been making Minecraft maps for about 10 years now, and it even became my job in 2019 when I started working at the Minecraft Marketplace making content for Bedrock. Although the longer I did it, the more I realized that the engine was really just holding me back. There were ideas which I had, ideas which I wanted to execute, which Minecraft just held me back. The engine didn't help me make the thing. It only got in my way. And over time, that just really wore on me. So for years, I've been wanting to make my own video game as a standalone, not tied down to the block game engine, but its own thing that I could just sell on Steam. So the question is, what was the game I actually wanted to make? So given that this was my first standalone game, I, I knew I wanted to keep it simple in concept, but have enough in there that it would be a challenge and also have enough going for it that it was interesting players. I figured since I had implemented soccer ball physics before, I may as well make a marble game. It was inspired by Marble Blast Ultra, this old game on the Xbox 360 that I used to play as a kid. Although I only had the demo version, so there were only like three levels I could play. And so I was thinking, in this game, you would use this marble to roll around in this environment. And I figured the environment would be themed like a toy set, like with wooden blocks. And you'd use this marble to roll around and interact with these gizmos to solve puzzles and do some parkour and get past obstacles to try and eventually get to a goal, right? And so there, there's a lot of level design potential there. It would also be cool to have a level editor in the future for people to make their own levels. Now, I decided to make the controversial choice to make my game from scratch. I'm not using any engine. I'm not using Unity. I'm not using Unreal. Now, I poked around with Unity some years ago, but I never really got the hang of it. I didn't really like it. Now, to explain why I decided to make it from scratch, just to code it from the ground up, I need to explain how I feel about arbitrary design choices. So programming is fundamentally about solving problems, trying to get the computer to do something, trying to automate some sort of task, right? And so the kinds of problems which I like to solve are, are purely mathematical or computational. I like solving problems like making a physics simulation. Oh, what's the next velocity of this object after this collision, right? I don't like solving problems like, oh, what uh, what is the material configuration I have to apply to this object in order to give it this behavior in the Unity engine? I don't like those kinds of problems because they don't exist at the core of mathematics and computer science. It's all about dealing with the arbitrary design choices of other developers. And I know at some level, I have to interact with arbitrary design choices. I mean, I'm using a computer that I didn't design that's running an operating system that I didn't make. So I have to interact with it on some level. So I wanted to go as far down as I could with these arbitrary design choices and deal with them as little as possible. And then everything else would just be dealing with pure mathematical and computational problems. Hence, I didn't want to use a game engine. I just wanted to code it from scratch. Now, as for my choice of language, originally I was making my game in C++ using the SDL2 library. Now, I had some issues with this. First of all, SDL2 is really invasive. It takes over the main function of your program and gives you like a fake main function and it has all these helper functions to kind of to kind of set up your game and everything. But also the biggest thing about C++ that just made it unsustainable for me was its archaic mode of code importation. Anytime you wanted to include code from another file, it was dumped into the global scope. The name of everything had to be unique, which meant everything had to be namespaced. Everything in the SDL2 library, for instance, was namespaced with 
SDL. And having to namespace everything just made everything so verbose and cumbersome. It didn't help also that when I was originally designing it, I got really caught up in making a text to renderer and that didn't really make an actual game. I just got focused on trying to make the game engine. For my next attempt, I wanted to focus on making the game itself, not the game engine. And this time I decided to try out Rust. Since Rust has all the features of C++, plus the memory safety of the borrow check, which is the blended sword, by the way. It can help you sometimes, it can hurt you other times, but regardless, the big appeal for me was that it had the features of C++ plus proper modern code importation that's not bound by the computer only having four megabytes of memory like the old compilers did. Now, I also wanted to avoid using libraries where I could, and this is also a controversial decision because each library has its own set of arbitrary design choices, I can hear it now in the comments. Oh, those, you know, why would you reinvent the wheel? Why would you, you know, do all this all over again? It's already been done before. Another reason was since I'm still trying out Rust, I don't necessarily want to commit to it all the way. I've heard good things about Zig, but Zig is currently in beta and I don't want to make something meant for production in something that's in beta. So by avoiding libraries, it will help port it to another language if the need arises. Now, before someone mentions Go, Go uses a garbage collector, and garbage collectors are what they collect. I just don't like garbage collectors. So when I began putting the system together, I only used one library. It was the Windows Sys library for getting the function bindings for the Windows API directly. Now I could get these myself, but using the library helped because it had all the function names listed out in the files of the library. So I could just use the library itself as the documentation for the API. Now, yes, I know this means that the game will not work on Mac and Linux, but I do plan on adding support for Mac and Linux in the future. I made sure that all the Windows code was separated in, into its own little corner so that I can switch it out for the relevant Mac and Linux code. Now, the first challenge was actually getting something to render on the screen. So because I was making this thing from scratch, I had to get the function bindings for the OpenGL API directly. Now I decided to use OpenGL and not Vulkan because I already have some experience with OpenGL and I don't have experience with Vulkan. I'll do Vulkan later. For now, OpenGL. I don't want to deal with how complex Vulkan is yet. So to get something to render on the screen, I had to get all of the OpenGL function bindings. And then I just took the default shader from Shader Toy as my placeholder, created a window, made a draw the shader, bada bean, bada boom. I have something to rendering on the screen. Okay, good. Then it was time to add keyboard control. So I added this little white ellipse on the screen that you can move around with keyboard. And after I got that put together, I decided to finally make a basic 3D environment using a very primitive ray tracer. Now this is just a flat, infinite checkered plane with the camera that just kind of pops around on the plane. Although the plan wasn't to use ray tracing, the plan for the game is to use ray marching not just for the graphics, but also the collision system. You see, ray marching works by using what's called a signed distance function or signed distance field, depending on who you ask. And basically, from any given point in space, you run this function and it will tell you how far away is the nearest piece of geometry. And so with that information, you can step that distance forward along the ray and you know for sure that you're not going to intersect anything. And this works not just for rendering graphics but also for collision because especially with the idea for the game that I had making this little marble roll around this environment the marble is a sphere and so you can project that through a sign distance function just fine so I put together the uh, the basic ray marcher I got these rounded cuboids drawn in and this goofy little marble which doesn't roll yet although at this point I still didn't have collisions implemented yet and still just had the basic hopping above an infinite plane like I did in the previous demo then the next thing I did was actually 
actually add in the collisions and make the marble roll around. So that was fun. After that, I wanted the marble to look nice. So I decided to give it this blue shiny look to it. So I used some 3D Perlin noise to make the pattern to separate the light blue from the dark blue. And I used a procedurally generated normal map to make the marble look bumpy. And this affects the normal vectors for reflecting the light rays so that the reflection is distorted. Now, what really set the graphics apart was once I replaced the cuboids with these wooden blocks. Now, the wood texture on these blocks is completely procedurally generated. Basically, what it does is it, like, it takes the cylinder in 3D space and like kind of rotates it some way and then uses 3D Perlin noise to kind of adjust the radius of it dynamically. And then it takes a slice out of it. Although these slanted wooden blocks weren't really cutting it, so then I decided to make this wedge here to serve as a ramp to climb up to a higher ground. And while I was in the middle of implementing all these things, I noticed that there were serious issues with lag. Every time the camera would get close to the ground, the frame rate would just be. And at the time, poor frame rates would also mess with the physics engine. So I had to fix that as well. Now, the issue was that there were too many iterations. See, the ray marching algorithm on its own really struggles with rays that move parallel to a surface, especially if the ray is very close to the surface, since it means that there will be many, many, many tiny steps that just miss the geometry altogether. So in order to fix this, I used two optimizations. The first optimization was to wrap every object in a bounding box and then use ray tracing to get the distance to that bounding box. And that would be treated as the first distance. Now this cut down a lot of the iterations, although it wasn't quite enough for the blocks on the ground, which have all these holes in it, right? So I'd use a second optimization which was taking the distance to the nearest point as well as the normal vector of that point to know where relative to the point is the nearest location on the geometry, right? And so wherever that is, I draw a plane perpendicular to that normal vector, which is tangent to the surface of the object. And then it sees where the ray intersects this plane. And then you just go there. Now, this works perfectly for convex objects and it will cut down the the number of iterations substantially. Now, it doesn't quite work for concave objects because it risks overshooting. And so you can kind of wiggle around with the optimization depending on what geometry you're working with. In the case of the goal, for instance, the outside can use the optimization, but the inside can't. And so it first checks with a simplified version of the geometry that doesn't have the little hole in the middle. And then once it gets past this initial geometry, it will check for the hole the normal way. So the optimization still works out there. So yeah, now the frame rate was stable. I made some adjustments to the marble physics as well to make it more natural to play. And then I put together this test level. Now this test level is really simple. You just kind of go up here and go up this ramp and jump on this whole block. And you know, the idea is to gain some momentum as you're rolling down this ramp and then eventually fall into the goal. So yeah, that's what I have so far in this game. I intend to make devlogs for the game as I go uh, to keep everybody updated on progress and just kind of document my development. Some ideas I have that I want to use will be gizmos to change the direction of gravity. I want there to be multiple marbles as well. And you can like switch between different marbles and then interact with like buttons and doors and everything. And you have to like solve the puzzle with these multiple marbles and kind of get their placement all just right. It'll be super cool. I also want to add portals, which will be very difficult to add to a ray marching engine. But I'm up for the challenge because I just love portals. Now, of course, I don't have a name for the game yet. I've just been calling it Marble Game internally. I'll come up with a name later on when it gets closer to completion. But yeah, that's all I got for now. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you all later. Tell me, birds, what's that? <laughs>